Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will. I'm out here on the boat with Aaron. Hello. And if you notice, Aaron is in dive gear and I am not. The reason why, I misunderstood the assignment. Um, <laughs> Aaron texted me early this morning and said a couple of Wahoo drifts and then go to the reef. And for some reason in my head, I did not realize he meant diving. Uh, so I brought my fishing gear. So Aaron's in the water diving while he's diving, I am jigging. And actually what I'm gonna target today, said no one ever, is uh, Bonita. Because I wanna show you that Bonita can act, tr if it's treated right, Bonita can act just like tuna. Um, it's a little bit richer. Sometimes it's even better than blackfin, it depends. So I'm gonna keep jigging. Hopefully I get a Bonita and I can show you what they did. What I show you what, I show you what they taste like. <laughs> I show you something. <laughs> So while Aaron is diving, I'm jigging for the bonita. And all I'm doing, I have a little hoagie lure on, letting it drop down, we're in about 100 feet. And I'm letting it drop down all the way. And then as I bring it up, a couple of jigs, reel in, reel in, couple of jigs. And hopefully that'll catch the attention of uh, what we're after, the bonita. <laughs> so I, I've almost hooked Aaron. <laughs> it's, we're off to a swimming start here. It's kind of funny because he's going down and let me know what's down there. So there's a couple of cereal mackerel. Let's see if we can get some of them interested. Oh, they make good sashimi too. I'm holding out for a bonita though. Whatever it is, it took a lot of line. Now it's giving up. Probably a jack. It actually had a good run. Whatever it was. Oh, it's a bonita. <laughs> Check it out. Now we're in the boat and he's unhooked. <laughs> So I'm not going to show it because YouTube is changing some of their uh, rules, but what you do is cut the throat, cut the tail to bleed the fish out. Now Bonita, a lot of people avoid eating them because they are a bloody fish. Um, but if you bleed them right away and eat them day of, man, they're, they're as good as any tuna. I stand by that. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do is treat this like a tuna and we're making sushi. There's a big shark down there. Oh god. Yeah, I think he just got it. I think the shark got it. No. Oh, dude. My jig was stuck. <laughs> Get that shark, dude. That's gotta be the shark, right? There was some big yellow jacks too. I mean, you're pretty light tackle, right? Very light. <laughs> What's your leader, like 15 or 20? 15. <laughs> Acting like a shark. There it is, it is heavy. Hit him. Don't let him whoop you. Oh, come on. <laughs> We have a 15 pound test on here. I'm going for the Bassmaster uh, Championship. Oh, whatever it is, is coming up now. What do you think it is? You want to take a bet? I want to say that it was, it's going to be a head of a yellow jack. No, it's still kicking, whatever it is. And then it's a whole yellow jack. You may have a mutton or something. For all I know. <laughs> oh, 
Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I torture myself with light tackle? Do you want me to get in there and shoot it? <laughs> now you're talking. Nice and slow, baby. Whatever it is, is gonna get sharp, so. Now I'm curious, now I don't wanna know. Get back in. You cannot lose this fish, bro. Cannot lose this fish. Oh. I have faith. Oh, she's coming up now. That's it. Whatever it is, it's a fish. Oh. <laughs> I can see it. Okay. You could see it. <laughs> That shark. I don't know, dude. You may have like a big grouper or something. Oh. It broke? Yeah. Whatever it was was very much still alive when I saw it. And it had like a No, that it just it had like a lighter lighter color to it. It was either a red grouper, a mutton, or a yellow jack. Oh, it pulled. What a loser. <laughs> that was a big fish. Yeah, it was. Uh may never know just so we are clear on how big that fish was and that it was not user error it was not me that lost the fish look at this hook that is not supposed to look like that whatever I just had on mangled absolutely mangled that hook. I hope you can see that. We'll never know what it was. So unfortunately my camera decided to shut off when I first started filleting this fish, but I'm not all the way done here. But one of the things that I was saying is up north we call these uh, uh, false albacore albies. Down here they're called bonita, bonito. And um, up north they're sport fish. Down here they're mainly bait. And very few people use them as food, what we're gonna use them for today. And the other thing I was saying was that I had the wrong choice in tackle today. I use light tackle, as you saw when I lost that big fish. Um, I like it, it's a bit more challenging, but to preserve the meat of the fish, it's not the best idea because fish, must like, much like us, we build lactic acid when we're working out and the fish, as you fight them and fight them, are building up this lactic acid and they're bleeding more and they can actually burn the meat. Um, and what that means is that the meat can actually turn to mush because there's just so much acid running through their muscle. And that can lend itself, especially with a fish like this, to a very irony taste. Now, I already have the fillets off. And to me, they look pretty good. I know they probably look pretty deep red here. Not the best fillet job, not the worst, but we got what we need here. So I am going to cut right down the center here. It is a deep, deep cherry red, but let me tell you, it looks good. And I'm gonna leave a little bit on the skin because I'm trying to avoid that bloodline. We'll just clean that up a bit. And that is all that deep, deep bloodline. But this looks, this looks good. So 
So of course, because they have a larger bloodline, you get less of a yield on it, but trust me, here, just, just to prove it, just to prove it, I mean, that looks as good as any, any tuna. That is delicious. That's as good as blackfin. I know earlier today, I said eat them same day, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. So what I want to do is to take my tuna loin. God, that is pretty. And we're gonna roll them in paper towel and then we're gonna put them into the fridge overnight. And that's gonna make them firm up. So then when we slice them, they're gonna be so, so good. So we have our two loins and then a piece of belly meat. And the belly meat, let me get this into the light here. Again, I would put that up against any blackfin tuna. And I mean these loins, they're gorgeous. We let the bonita rest overnight I couldn't be happier with that that looks absolutely absolutely gorgeous and letting it rest in the paper towels so I'm gonna butcher what's technically happening but I can tell you what happens as far as mouthfeel or something like that like so you wrap them in the paper towel and you let them sit overnight and the muscle relaxes so in a sense, it, does, it gets less chewy, but it also soaks out some of the moisture so it gets more firm. So it's easier to slice, but yet softer when you chew it, if that makes sense. So it gets firm and softer. <laughs> All right, now one thing, I'm gonna marinate them and we're gonna get our marinade, our marinade going. I have ginger here that I peeled the skin off of. And then a little bit of rice vinegar, not too much. Some soy sauce, finish that off, and some fish sauce. Now one of the things you'll notice, I have a, uh, oh, and a lime. I have a uh, pot of boiling water here. And it's a trick I learned actually by watching another chef's YouTube channel. Uh, his name's Taku and it is Outdoor Chef Life is the channel. Um, and you blanch the tuna very, very quickly just to cook the outside, the very outer edge of the tuna. And why is because it is such an oily fish that doing that will actually let it soak up the marinade way better and way faster. So we're gonna give that a try today. So thank you Taku for teaching me that trick, pretty neat. All right, so each piece, it's gonna be very, very quick. Like I said, we don't want it cooked we still want it raw okay I'm gonna put this aside for at least 20 30 minutes let it soak up that marinade, and then we're gonna get the other ingredients ready because we're gonna make rice bowls with our sliced bonita. Okay, so I'm gonna get everything together that we need for our rice bowl. One of the things that I did ahead of time is I made some pickles. Uh, really, really simple uh, recipe. I have it in a bunch of other videos. If you go to the Bon Mi video, you'll see how to make the carrot and daikon, and then the pickled red onion I do in almost every couple of videos. So we have a little bit of pickled red onion. And then this is pickled carrot and daikon. Now daikon is a radish, but a very, very mild radish. Chop up some of our other ingredients here. We got scallion. The wind's starting to pick up. Hopefully it doesn't blow my scallions away. <laughs> Slice up some jalapeno. 
nobody gets blown out by a big old chunk of jalapeno. Some cilantro, and we're just gonna pick the stems, keep it whole leaf. And some cucumber. Nice thin slices. And the last thing that I have here is a hard boiled, sorry, it's actually a soft boiled egg. So what I did was bring my water up to a boil, put the egg in, turn the uh, heat off and let the egg sit in there for six minutes. After it came out, I put it in an ice bath to cool it down, peeled it, and then put it in soy sauce to marinate. So that we're gonna slice right before we put it onto the rice bowl. So, let me go make the rice bowls and I'll bring everything out and we'll construct them all out here. All right, I have my two bowls of rice ready to go. And start adding all of my ingredients here. Now, if you are a person that eats rice bowls, are you the kind of person that eats every ingredient separately or are you a psychopath that mixes everything together? <laughs> I wanna know. I'm a person, I make my own little bites. I'm not mixing everything together, that's just crazy. So we have our daikon and carrot, some cilantro, and this is just toasted nori. And now slice my egg. So this should be not all the way cooked through. We still want oh, that is perfect so again water up to a boil throw your egg in shut off the heat six minutes later and then throw it into an ice bath now we have our star the bonita People are crazy. It is beautiful. And we'll top those. Just a little bit of sesame seeds. And our scallions. And just for the rice, I'm going to pour a little bit of the marinade over the fish. Now, you guys always take my word for it whenever I taste all these things and I say that they taste great. I'm going to grab Madeline and Aaron, they're going to taste them, and then we'll know whether or not Bonita is good or not or comparable to blackfin tuna. So hang on one second. Madeline is indisposed, so you're going to have to take my word and Aaron's word. I could be Madeline. Right. <laughs> so you got pickled carrots and daikon, pickled red onion, cucumber, jalapeno, Ooh. an egg. Ooh, y'all. <laughs> that was Madeline. <laughs> mm -hmm. I need to eat just a bonito. Yeah. I kind of went all in there. That marinade. Yeah. It looks gorgeous. As a fisherman, visually, I, we can't really tell the difference. That marinade is awesome. No, not really much of a difference. A little smidge of a, I don't know the word. It's like you can almost taste the metallic -y taste. It's a little bit rich. It's a little rich. bit irony. Yeah, that makes sense. But nothing that sets off a red flag or anything. I mean, that's why I cut out all that bloodline was that it wasn't overpowering. A lot of people cut the bloodline out on everything anyway, but wow. particularly cut it out on this. No, oh, but honestly, honestly, it's great, especially if you eat it with everything else. <laughs>
See, he makes his own bite. He doesn't mix everything all together. Only crazy people do that. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for watching this one. This was actually a really fun two days. If you liked this episode, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.